is really 100% a direct quote from my drill sergeant, so I hope that you appreciate it. And also I'm doing some slight singing, so if I sound terrible, you know it's all about vulnerability. <laughs> Alright, so it's called To Quote My Drill Sergeant. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your fucking lives. It sounds cliche, but I know this, but know this, you will leave here tied to the greatest sack of dickheads this side of the world, known as the U.S. fucking Army Privates. I have three rules. One, don't make it my problem. Two, don't be my problem. Three, don't make me deal with your problems. If you follow these three simple rules, we'll get along just fine. If not, fuck you. I ain't your mama, I ain't your daddy, I ain't here to hold your hand, I'm here to help you kill people, and hopefully if you're fucking smart enough, you won't fucking die. I don't give a flying fuck about you. You are nothing more than a mere, than a, another box of bad shit that I have to wrap up and pretend to be soldiers that I got for my fucking birthday. That's right, Privates, today's my fucking birthday. <laughs> Remember that, Privates. I don't fucking care about your shit, your lives, your baby mama or daddy drama. You are pathetic shit, and I will make you into soldiers. So now let's discuss discipline. It's the only D I fucking like. It's the only D you will ever fucking like. It is the only D that you will ever fucking like in this goddamn platoon, and you will get lots of it, and you will get all that you ever need. I will force it on you, in you, around you, in your soul. Got it? And I swear to God, if another fucking person giggles, I'm gonna make you beat your face until you're singing hallelujah. Now fall in. One, two, three, four. Your left, right, oh, left, right, oh, left, right, oh, left. Down by the river, took a little walk. Ran into Afghanis, we had a little talk. We pushed them, we kicked them, we threw them in the river and laughed as they drowned. We don't need no Afghanis hanging, hanging, hanging around. One, two, three, four. I went to the store where all the old ladies shop. I got out my machete and I began to chop, singing left, right, left, right, left, right, girl. Left, right, left, right, get on down. I went to the playground where all the little kids play. I got out my gun and I began to spray singing left, right, left, right, left, right, kill! One, two, three, four. Sitting in my foxhole, sharpening my knife. Up jumps the enemy. I had to take his life. Airborne MPs lead the way. One, two, three, for if I die on the old combat zone, box me up and ship me home. Pin my medals on my chest, bury me in the leaning rest. Tell my mama I did my best. We call it victory. One, two, three, four. Mama told Johnny not to go downtown. Army recruiter been hanging around. Johnny didn't listen and he went anyway. Now he's fighting in Vietnam. One, two, three, four. Mama, mama, can't you see what the army's done to me? Mama, mama, can't you see what the army's done to me? I used to wear my faded jeans. Now I'm wearing army greens. Whoa. What the army's done to me. People, people, can't you see what the army's done to me? They taught me how to fight and kill, telling me that it's a thrill. I used to fight the Taliban, now I'm blowing through black and tans. I used to find fireworks fun, now they make me scream and run. I used to laugh wholeheartedly, now I'm begging nightly to sleep and make the dreams stop. 
Craving that bang to make me drop? Is this what you call liberty? A hero for you and me? Do medals make me a hero or do the scars of my mind I can't return? cedar trees. Get a line up, form up, count off, gear up, present, arms, fire! Training, 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 deployment. What comes next? Oh, yeah, uh, 0400 stepping outside the wire. Mount up your trucks. God bless. Silent when we chant. In by fire, out by fire. Live by weapons, die by weapons. Life of seconds, death of inches, everything else is luck. Afghani children are running and playing until we come and it's weird, they're paid five dollars for each empty magazine. Bullets! Bullets! Panic! AK, M4, where is it coming from? No one knows. Tactical formation, searching, 525, 525, 525 meters. Trucks, move out, scanning, searching, driving, scanning, searching, praying, 525, 525, 525. Why is it so silent? Why does it feel so heavy? Do you feel almost like an expectation? Boom! Bodies, pieces, screaming, shouting, metal, melting, creaking, gunpowder, burning, scrambling, safe for covering fire! Pulling out the truck, pieces, pieces, pieces of people. Dick, 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 boom! Ears ringing, firing, left, right. Dick, 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 boom! Reloading, wetness falling off my face. Why? My chest, my arms, everything's sleepy. Why am I so sleepy? It's just like blackness, nothingness. Dick, 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 dick. Focus, 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 Valhalla. Mm -hmm. uh, right, uh, yeah. <coughs> this one's called uh, I See Your Blood. This makes me sound like I'm an emo kid trying to share my poetry, but <laughs> spare with me. Um, <clears throat> I see your blood from time to time, cement walkways seem to be stained with it. Walls seem to be painted with it. I knew you would die once that bomb went off. It's in my dreams. Lights are flickering. There's this girl screaming, and the walls are just painted blood red. She chases me down the stairs, these never-ending stairs, looking into a mirror, and I, what do you see? That girl, she could, she could be me. Covered in bloody hands, feet, uniforms, just me? I feel dirty just wearing your blood for days, weeks, years. Yes, it's the closest I'll ever be to you, and it's free. Okay. <laughs> Women wailing. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen, uh, I don't know if this is right, but I guess Muslim people or people in the Middle East that as they mourn, it's a very like body movement. If you don't know what I'm talking about, like just YouTube it, you'll see it. It's very powerful. Um, so it was one of the first things that really struck me when I was in Afghanistan is watching these people mourn and how they mourn, because it's very different than how we mourn, you know, standing there just like staring at this body, when like sometimes you just want to throw the casket, punch someone in the face and say like, what's wrong with you, right? And this is a full body movement, and it's very powerful, and honestly, I feel like we should have started adopting it. Might be better for our grieving process, but I wrote a poem about it, it's called Women Wailing. Women wailing, all in black, such an outpouring of grief. It is vocal, it is physical, it is collective, it is grief. When did we forget to mourn? As a country, as individuals? Where is my grief? Why can I just watch and not feel? What do I mourn for? Is it my innocence? Is it my naivety? Is it my life? Is it their lives? Rarely it comes, but for me it comes in waves. Giant tsunamis, actually. Sobbing for what has been lost for all of us. For humanity. For that old woman throwing herself in the ground over and over and over again, and beating me in the chest, what I can only assume screaming at me is why. 
screaming and grabbing their heads, their bodies of each other. It is a community process. The loss surrounds us forever, as it always was and as it always will be. Seventeen years later, we are still fighting this war. Where is our group? Uh, so, at the last sword fight tournament thing that I did, uh, I, my last poem was kind of shortened and it was like a letter as a message. So I wrote the prequel to that, but I wrote it afterwards, so I did it kind of like George Lucas. And uh, I have to make jokes, otherwise I'll cry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Empty. Bed made. Clothes folded. Boots under the bed. Photos of your daughter, of your husband. Bath towel still damp, hanging to dry. Movies disorganized in a box. Shooter. I was always your favorite, and it's still in the player. Wedding ring hanging from your necklace, locked away. Pink blankets folded away, because why not, you said. We're at fucking war. Let me have a pink blanket. Mm -hmm. Army issue inventory. Four pairs of uniforms, minus the one that you were wearing. One pair of boots, minus the one you were wearing. Fourteen socks and underwear, seven 30-round magazines. Seven missing because you were wearing them. One flick field load carrier, damaged with body fluids. One pair of goggles with inserts. One pair of ear protection, marked damage. One camelback, two canteens, marked damage. One field pack, marked damage. One assault pack, damage. One ACH, Army Combat Helmet, marked damage. Two patrol caps. One M4A2, marked damage. One M9 pistol, fixable damaged. One cop. Two blankets. One pillow with case. Check box if dog tags are recovered. <laughs> On your tack box. Your journal is mostly filled. There's unfinished letters to home from an unfinished life. One letter addressed to me in case of goodbyes. One letter addressed to him, forever I love you. And in one five by five by five crate is all that's left of your life here. Now our room is empty. One fellow soldier alone in a box, echoing with months of memories. I'll read you the message. It's a bit long, so bear with me. It's called Message from Home. Whew, okay. Got this. Okay. <clears throat> Please leave your message for Leslie after the beep. Beep. Hey there, Logan. Uh, it's me, Finn, or I guess you would know me as Starbuck. Uh, I know that sounds like an Adele song. Um, but, all right, you wouldn't know that song. Okay, so remember our guard duty talks when you always said, you know, I always said that I like the name Finn, you were like, yeah, that's pretty cool, and, you know, I know it's been a while, uh, but I guess, how is it? I guess it doesn't really matter now, though, <laughs> does it? It doesn't, you, I don't really know what I should be saying to you, I guess. I mean, like, uh, oh, happy birthday. You would be 35, right? That's May 24th. Uh, how amazing is that? I know you love birthdays, girl, I know you can drink so much without being sick, it's kind of fucking impressive. Um, I bought a cigar for it though, figured we could like smoke it, or I guess I could in, uh, in uh, honor of you. Uh, I saw your daughter on Facebook, she's growing up super fast, she looks just like you. Dimples, brown hair, blue green eyes. Uh, and Will, he's doing great as a dad, he took her fishing, mudding, horseback riding, they even went to St. Paul the other day. She's learning to ice skate, so she can play ice hockey, kind of reminds me of someone. She's also top of her class straight A student. She hasn't really asked about you though yet. But I mean she wears your t-shirt and patrol caps. Sometimes I see pictures. They're really precious. <laughs> you would be so proud of proud of her, I know it. Uh, I haven't heard much from Will though. I mean he's not with anyone. Uh, he's pretty much involved in Emma's life. Probably doesn't want to keep them probably does it to keep them both busy and, and you know focused. I, I I hope that doesn't upset you. I just I just wanted you to know how great everything is 
is doing. I, I mean, I know you and I know you're wondering about me and you know, I'm just doing fine. No, really fine. It's, you know, or at least uh, trying to be fine every day. I mean, I miss you. Like when November comes, I try not to think about it. I mean, I have a girlfriend, she's super great, but then I'm going to counseling now for a couple years and it seems to be helping, or at least that's what my counselor says, the jury's still out. Um, I, I miss you. I, I find myself going through your Facebook, sometimes looking through your pictures. It's, it's really sad and pathetic, I mean, really. I, I guess it's just hard for me because I feel like I don't, or I shouldn't have to grieve about you. I mean, I lost my friend, they lost you know, their mother and their lover, and, and I knew I knew you only for a couple years, and I feel like I have some fucking right to be sad. I mean, you're still gone. You're still gone. Within a second, like a single second, you were there. You were there, and then you weren't, and then I watched your golden thread just be right in front of my eyes, and as if you didn't exist, but I know you did because I had to pack up all your fucking things and send them back home. Everything. I had to pack it all up. The army doesn't care about your personal stuff, but God forbid you lose their equipment. Did you know I had to fill out a form because they lost an asset of a weapon in a bulletproof vest? I mean, like, what the fuck, people? I had to itemize and tag your entire life. Like, you just fucking died. Like, fuck that. And I mean, like, like right after you died, like right fucking after you died, and I was just so fucking pissed. I was really pissed. It was as if they didn't even care about you at all. Or like maybe they never did, or maybe I just realized it. Like you would talk about sometimes about being disenfranchised, and I would just be like, ha ha ha, whatever. But no, it was just like fucking rude. It was just seriously fucking rude. I mean, you were just, why didn't you just stay undercover? I fucking told you to stay undercover. You were like, no, I have to go help someone. Why do you help someone? And there I am just tagging along just to watch you fucking die. Like, how fucked up is that? How fucked up are you? So, like, I have to pick up the pieces of your body. I have to pick up your stuff. I have to pick up your fucking life. How could you even do that to me? Why would you even do that to me? Like, did you even ever fucking think about me? Did you ever fucking think about your daughter or your husband or anybody else? No, you fucking thought about yourself. And you fucking thought about some lowly-ass asshole who's just got himself blown up. But you don't even need to fucking save them. You don't even need to do that, but you decided in all of your infinite wisdom that you had to. Well, go fuck yourself, because now I'm left here alone. Just, that's not what I meant. I, it's just been a rough night. It's been a long night. And I had to dream about you again, and there was the fire in the middle, and I woke up smelling diesel and gunpowder, and there's... I, sometimes I avoid <coughs> diesel trucks because the smell reminds me too much of you and over there and over in the sandboxes, you would say sandboxes if we were kids. But I guess I was a kid. I, I miss you. I don't want my only memory of you to be you dying over and over again in my dreams. I just don't know how to let you go. I'm sorry I missed your funeral. It was, I was in the hospital. I couldn't, like, I guess we both weren't where we were supposed to be. Uh, it's nothing super serious. You know, I have both, I have all my limbs and I can walk, so I'm incredibly grateful. I'm in pain a lot, but I mean, it doesn't matter. I wanted to see you when I got home, and I thought, why should I? I mean, it's not you, right? It's just a stone, it's just a fucking headstone. I didn't mean to make your birthday message about this, I just don't know what to do. I don't have someone that really understands. I have great people, it's just hard to explain that I miss you and I love you. You are a great person, you probably still are. I'm just, and I'm trying to get, take care of myself. I just want to finish with saying I'll see you in my dreams. And happy birthday, Scout. Say hi to everyone for me. Civilian again. It wasn't at the 
airport because that's where they just left me, right there, right back, right away. How can I sit in class and listen to these privileged children talk about war and politics and they're going to school like on their parents' money and it just burns my soul? Like where and when will my anger be justified and be ratified? When will they listen? When will you listen? How do you hold the hand of a child knowing that you took the life of one? How do you caress and love someone when you know you, you killed with hatred? How do you repent? Who do you repent to? How do you atone for your sins? How do you make amends with people who are dead? Which side is God even on? Is it God or is it Allah? I would really like to know because I want to be on that side. Where the fuck is God in this war? Why do I feel so alone? How do I just simply go home? That's it. The best time to write is... The best place to write is... The best person to write is... Thank you very much. I am still Azrael Johnson. I will be Azrael Johnson all night. I'll be reminding you. Uh, our next performer... Um, of all of my recent friends, I've probably put him through the most of, like, prove yourself to me, even though he didn't know it at the time. He's like, alright, so... Small story, and I'm not going to take too long. I have I have two profiles I deal with poetry on. I have W.K. Pressman, and then I have Ezra Johnson. And, like, most of the time, they don't meet. But, like, every once in a while, somebody really cool comes on W.K. Pressman. I'm like, okay, should I be friends with them? Maybe not. Should I be friends with them? Maybe not. So, long, well, not it, not long, but longer than a probably intended story, shorter. Um, I finally did add this person to my friend profile, so that's really all I have to say about him. He's a really awesome guy who writes about veganism, which I am not, but I can appreciate because, you know, factory farming sucks, but anyway, without further ado, let's bring it up, Keith Allison. Dogs are delicious. Don't judge what I eat. They're loaded with protein from their cute heads to their feet. Animals were intended for us to eat. If they weren't, then why are they made of meat? And don't get all sappy. They were humanely raised. They were loved and cared for before being broiled and braised. It's tradition. We've done it for hundreds of years. So leave me alone with your pathetic tears. Oops, did I say dogs? Cows, I meant, and somehow you no longer offer lament. Well, Keith, I uh, thank you. <laughs> so it's Keith Allison. Uh, thanks so much, Ezra. It's a pleasure being up here. It's an honor to share the stage with so many amazing performers. Thank you for Luna and Super Team and Finn. Fantastic job. Looking forward to everyone else that's coming down the road as well. Um, so I write about things that I'm passionate about. I write about my frustrations and my hopes for more compassion, more love, more just to humans and non-human animals as well. So I have a variety of things I've shared out of a cow suit to a little more variety in some of my poetry. This next one is entitled, Orwell Seems Less Like Fiction Every Passing Day. The swamp is swampier, the debt is um, deadier, and Mexico hasn't paid a fucking dime towards a non-existent wall. Sexism is in, reproductive as freedom is out, because they care deeply about your children until they are born. Then caging them is fine, but providing health care and clean water is not worth the cost. If they are too poor for bread, then let them eat cake, unless they are gay. Christians have lost Christ, but they are still certain that they hate Muslims and Mexicans and people from shithole countries. Red MAGA hats are slightly more subtle than white pointy ones. Corruption is not just overlooked, but defended at all costs. Kim Jong-un is trusted, Robert Mueller is not, and the president would fail in the first round of a spelling bee. Yeah. Facts 
became alternative, the EPA wants to destroy the environment, and the national crisis is what's fake. The president can't stop praising himself with his third grade vocabulary, and sexual assault does not prevent you from taking a Supreme Court seat. It was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13, and I wish this horrifying novel would end so reality could start. When escape only leads you to what you were running from, the headline reads, the internet is freaking out about a dead cow in a supermarket, and to be fair, the cow's entrance to the meat aisle was astonishingly unique for the simple reason that he, unlike the endless procession of others, entered alive. He wasn't meant to walk into the store on his own. The plans for his death were well underway. Like so many beside him and countless before him, he was packed tightly into a truck, an involuntary passenger with a one-way ticket to a dismal destination, the House of Slaughter. But an overturned truck offered his chance of escape, and off he ran, as fast as his hooves would allow, until the strange open doors beckoned him. A respite, perhaps, from the horror both behind and ahead. But his supposed sanctuary was already filled with the bodies of his bovine brethren, dismantled and displayed, and coolers kept frozen to impede their decay. A sudden bullet sent his body to the ground, falling lifeless like the packaged remains surrounding him. The customers, it seems, were upset that they had so vividly witnessed the pools of blood seeping from the broken remnants of someone who only moments ago was standing on his own four legs. They preferred not to think of their burgers as dead. Thank you. Separated. I sit in the cell, no oblo in place. My mother was taken, I can't see her face. We fled here for safety. They said it was great. You bragged about freedom. I'm locked in a crate. When the music comes on, for your flag I must stand. Forced allegiance by the back of a hand to a country that sees me as a rapist, a thief, who separates children, compounding our grief. Illegal, they call me, as they vow to deport. I sit as a child, alone in a court. I'm asked to defend my actions, my choice, but all that I want is my mother's sweet voice. Where's your compassion? Where's your love? Where's your resemblance to this Jesus above? Dear America, if you are so great, why do you treat me with so much hate? Yay. The endless wait for the right time. This is not the right place. Lunch counter, football field. Edmund Pettus Bridge. This is not the right time. 1955, 1991, 2018. This is not the right way. Marching, sitting, kneeling. The simple truth is that for you, the right time is never. The right way is silence, and the right place is far away from you. A strange definition of love. Corpse chompers, flesh munchers, and partakers of carcass cuisine will not hesitate to proudly proclaim, without a hint of irony, their love for the animals upon which they dine. My brain is spinning in circles. I'm confused. No matter how long my eyes stare at the words that form the entry inside Merriam-Webster, I fail to see the inclusion of wishing someone dead. I love and eat grandma is surprisingly not an included sample sentence. I guess you could hope for an update in the next edition. Love, noun, one syllable, an intense feeling of deep affection that is easily overlooked when your stomach begins to growl. As in, oh my sweet, adorable poodle, I had such love for you until I got hungry and heated the barbecue. This is indeed a true story uh, from very recently. It's too early for math, a true story. Evaluating the amount of cat barf against the proximity to my body as I was startled from my nighttime slumber failed to equal the amount of tired I was. Thank you. This is called Morals on Monday. 
Meatless Mondays for those of us who don't want animals to suffer every day. I mean, I care, but not on Tuesdays. Wednesdays, Thursdays, the weekend. One day a week, I can do something better. I won't pay for their suffering on Monday. I'm already hating the alarm clock, the official end of my weekend. It brought me back to my 9 to 5. I guess I can eat a bean burrito today. Not tomorrow. That's asking too much. I can't be expected to care two days in a row. Well, hold on. While only causing suffering six days a week is certainly better than seven, when do our morals have breaks? Optional days. If our boss exhibited sexist attitudes, would we encourage him to stop being sexist on Thursdays? Since we know not being sexist every day would be too sudden a change for him. Are we against family separation on the weekends? Do we oppose rape on Fridays? Do we shun racism every other Tuesday? Is pedophilia intolerable the first Sunday of the month? If we deem something wrong, how can it be wrong only some of the time? Is convenience a justification for our morals? Do we really only have the willpower for 14.3% follow-through on our values? For those unaware, you're hearing some booing. I do sometimes read poetry in a cow suit. <laughs> the next poem is entitled, The President Who Cried Wolf. His sheep had increased in numbers. His little herd now surpassed 330 million, but his tactics had not matured. A desire to tell the truth still eluded him, despite all the sheep who had suffered under his negligent care. The boy, despite his 72 years, still endlessly cried wolf. 9,451 times last I checked, but his lips may have moved since then. Catering table not included. The sigh of relief when the credits roll and we can rest assured that no animals were harmed in the making of this movie. Somehow, I get the feeling the American Humane Association overlooked the catering table. And don't worry, I would hate for you to have to navigate through internal moral conflict, and I certainly don't want to listen to your twisted justifications. So I took the liberty of editing the certification for future usage. You can now say, without a Niagara Falls of hypocrisy, no animal we care about was harmed in the making of this movie. We ain't the rest. <laughs> Not where it is from. Bacon, burgers, chicken nuggets, you may have bought them from a restaurant or the grocery store, but that is not where they came from. That flesh belonged to a body. That muscle was attached to bones, to nerves, to a head with a brain that knew pain and fear and human betrayal, to a heart that pumped blood. Blood that was spilled all over the floor of the slaughterhouse, directly because of that dollar you just handed over.